Welcome to Butterflies of Wisdom, everyone. You will probably hear this episode next Wednesday, or if I can get it together today, I would publish it on Thursday, which is June 22nd. For those of you who don't know what June 22nd is, it happens to be my 30th birthday. And oh, man. Yep. Let's do this in style. And so the last day of me being 29, I decided to bring a person on that calls himself the change maker. So let's end my 29th year, my 20s, with style. And without further ado, I'm going to let Greg take it away. He also has a phenomenal podcast. But I'm going to let Greg take it away. All right. First and foremost, uh, I'm thankful and I'm grateful for you reaching out and having me on the podcast, especially that it's such an important and pivotal moment in your life. I mean, 30th birthday, you're going to contact me to be on the podcast? Like, I'm like, oh, man, that's, that's phenomenal. That's great. Yeah. And um, I'm, I, can't, yes. I can't wait to share today. And I guess uh, I'll give a little bit more context to kind of who I am. Um, I do call myself a culture change agent. And I'm just a kid from Durham, North Carolina, born and raised in Durham, North Carolina. And to, to make a long story short before we get into the podcast, uh, currently I operate the Minority Trailblazer podcast where I interview people of color um, every week. And we've been thankful and grateful to have over a quarter million downloads. Um, I, outside of that, um, I've written and published two books uh, called Remember Your Genius. Um, I speak to middle schools, high schools, and um, colleges across the country on entrepreneurship branding and uh, overcoming obstacles and then most importantly i just try to convey my messages in an authentic succinct and of course energetic way so i'm excited to kind of add some value there on this podcast it really means a lot that you uh, invited me and hopefully we can get to that 700 downloads we're gonna get it we're gonna get it just for you we're gonna get 700 dollars yes me. you know my secret you have to listen to my podcast you know my secret Greg knows my secrets. He's listened, and he knows what's going on. So, yes, but before I um, start asking you questions, I want to know, people that are listening to this podcast that are bed-bound and think, the heck with it. I want to make a change. Win is making a change. Greg is making a change. Lena Campbell is making a change. Dreams and Drives, um, she's another phenomenal podcast of color. How would you suggest a disabled person or any person who's having a bad day, the last day of the, the um, June 21, and they want to make mm-hmm. a change? How would you suggest that? Um, the best thing that I would do, and this is the most critical, critical, critical thing, is to realize that you're worth it. And the reason why I say that, because a lot of times when we don't make changes, when we keep unnecessary people in our lives, when we continue to make poor decisions, when we continue to have negative habits, is because in our hearts somewhere we don't believe we're worth the changes. And I can I can talk to that because I know if you listen to my podcast, you know a little bit about my story, I've been homeless before for a whole year. I made out of trash cans. I've, I've, I've been broke before. I've lived that type of life where every single day I'm waking up, I don't know who, what I'm about to eat. I don't know what's going on. And this is as a grown man. This isn't like 10 years ago. This is a couple years ago. So it didn't happen until I had to look in the mirror. And this is after success. This wasn't like, okay, I came from nothing. No, I've had a history of, of doing great things and of achieving a lot. But I always attach my achievements, my self-worth, all into my achievements, all into what people thought of me. And when you do that, you end up in dark places. But that one day, I don't know what I was, I felt like I was walking around the bridge, and I was thinking, I was crying, and I mean, I just was going through. I really didn't want to be on earth no more, but then I just said, man, Greg, you're worth it. Because I had to remember those times that people, like, believed in me, those times that people smiled, the times that um, I really was happy. And those the best times were that when I felt the firm, when I knew I was worth it. So I just tried to start cultivating that mindset. And then I just took small steps. So once you realize you're worth it, then you just start taking small steps. Like I said, just waking up in the morning on time. Just going to class on time. 
And that's what allowed me thus far to go from a guy that was homeless, to go from a guy that was eating trash cans, to go from a guy that didn't want to live on this earth to now being one of the best speakers under 30 in this world. Wow. My goodness. You just shifted your DNA and shifted the DNA of life. And so, yeah, that's a powerful story to begin with. Now, I get to ask you the favorite child question. What mm-hmm. has been your favorite interview that you have done on the podcast, and why? Wow, ooh, that's a loaded, loaded question. Hopefully, my my, my listeners are going to do the podcast. Don't listen to this; they're going to be like, "Yo, what in the world, G?" Um, but I think honestly, my favorite favorite interview was. Early in the podcast lane, and I have to say it was episode episode 21. Um, and it was an interview where I had a, had a guy, one of my friends, Travis Jackson, the host of HCU Pride Nation, and he actually interviewed me, so we inverted it. And the reason why I say it was my favorite is because we both had similar similar paths, and that was at a point we were both were going through a lot of stuff. And, then, okay, like, okay, where are you going with this, Greg? The reason why it was important because while we were going through this stuff, we were still creating. And I think that's big and that's huge because a lot of people, when they're going through things, when life threw them a bad hand, when, when they're not getting the respect they feel they deserve, when they feel like they're getting overlooked, they shut down and stop creating. And what I realized when I did that podcast was that even though at that time in my life people didn't know, I was, I was struggling still with a lot of stuff, but I had made a commitment. Back in the days, I did, but I had made a commitment to continue to move forward and still execute, even while I was struggling. So that has allowed me now to do well, but even in the midst, and, and I, don't know who's listen, I don't know who's listening or where everybody at is in their lives, but if you're struggling right now, things are not going well, I just challenge you, challenge you, challenge you to continue waking up, continue doing the things you need to do, because guess what? It doesn't rain forever. So that's why that podcast is so important to me, because we still were able to put, put it out there have great time and have great content and it resonated and also too that was the podcast that went viral so remember i didn't even like, i was going through a lot of stuff but i still worked and guess what that was the podcast that put me on the map on linkedin that had eighty-eight thousand likes all these comments and what would have happened if i would have said man i'm not feeling it that day and i wouldn't do it i wouldn't be here on this podcast i wouldn't be here so i hope that reaches some audience and some listeners Oh, my God. So, basically, you did a introverted podcast, episode mm-hmm. 21, which now yep. I have to go back and into your podcast feed and listen to that podcast because it's introverted, and I have an introverted podcast. See, you taught me a new word uh, in the podcasting mm-hmm. MSP. I didn't know the word. But I have an introverted podcast mm-hmm. coming out tomorrow for my birthday, wow. a special episode where someone okay. interviews me and we get, he gets candid with me. He gets, this person gets candid with me and you guys yeah. know this person as my co-host. But when you have a introverted podcast, where um, you ask a person that's been working with you or um, to interview you publicly, they come up with some of the coolest questions. I don't know about you, but my interviewer came up with some of the coolest questions. Of course, he didn't tell me what was going on. He didn't want me to research. He didn't want me. He just wanted me to be really candid. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know when the person interviewed you. Did he tell you, okay, this is what I'm going to ask you, or was it off the cuff? Um, it was. It was. Some of it was sculpted. Um, however, the guy, he's he's his own monster in his own sense. That I gave him some stuff, that some talking points, or some things that I would like to talk about, and he just did, he just ignored it all. And we just was off the cuff, and kind of like what you said, kind of like what you said, though, the whole goal, and it ended up being 
very, very just conversation. We were able to dig deep on a lot of stuff that, honestly, I've never talked about. So I definitely think you're, it's, you're going to enjoy the experience. You're going to be able to dig deeper than a lot of other interviews. And um, I'm excited to hear. You got to definitely make sure you let me know when, uh, when they release that episode. Well, um, well, it's going to be released, you guys. The inverted episode I did on Monday is going to be released on Thursday, my 30th birthday. That's why we did it. It's on mm-hmm. my 30th birthday, so you guys get to know me a little bit better than you already do. And so, okay, that's your favorite episode. What has been your favorite entrepreneurial moment in all this chaos? Well, I shouldn't call it chaos because we yeah, love it. Nah, it's, not, it's beautiful chaos, I would say. You, you had it right. It is beautiful chaos. <laughs> but I think my, my biggest, biggest, biggest moment was seeing my parents or my mom definitely, because my dad, unfortunately, wasn't able to attend, come to my second book signing. And the reason why that was my most pivotal moment was because they held me down when things were just going awry in my life. Like, when things were going awry, when society would have said, yo, he's 25, he should have it together right now. Why is he still staying at home? He's 25, he should have it together right now. Why is he still... Uh, why is the dad still paying for his rent? When society almost turned their back on me, they just allowed me to grow. They allowed me to have that space and that time to get better and get back on my feet, which enabled me to have the the ability to write two books. And to see my mom there, to see all the people that supported me, my family, my church, and everybody there signing books, buying books. I see a line wrapped around, like, the corner to get my uh, my book autographed. It was, like, surreal. Not for the sense of, like, vanity purposes, but it's like, yo, my mother here, person that sacrificed so, so much, had to take so much slack from me, had to see me go from up, down, up, down, and to be there for me really meant a lot for me. And that's that's why I challenge a lot of people, too, man. Like, when you're going through stuff, when you're going through obstacles, remember that there's always somebody there to support you. There's always somebody in the corner. And, and sometimes that somebody isn't a family member, but... I mean, that's why I challenge people to just stay, stay close as they can to people that they love and they admire, because if not, life can get real tough. Yes, I definitely, I, I definitely agree. I mean, I have family driving slash flying in for my 30th birthday, and my God, I'm surrounded by love, and I'm surrounded by the love of my fans, and mm-hmm. I'm surrounded by the love of sharing and inspirational stories and then to doing rock stars like you. So when mm-hmm. you have your greatest entrepreneurial moment or your not so great entrepreneurial moment, stick with the people that love you, whether it's your family mm-hmm. or your close next door neighbor, and then yep. they'll watch you succeed and be your cheerleader from the corner of the room. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so... What has been your favorite technology tool that you have used on a daily basis to conduct the work you do, which is phenomenal, by the way? Um, I think my, my biggest biggest resource, uh, biggest tool will be, of course, the obvious, like the MacBook, but the, 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 to be specific, and I guess it's a service, but I would say LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn is LinkedIn. Yeah, I knew it. Link. I knew it. Yeah, LinkedIn. And and the thing is, like, real honestly, two years ago, I really didn't leverage LinkedIn like that because when I, I used to, my background is kind of in corporate finance, so I, I did a couple years in corporate America, so I never really used LinkedIn extensively. But then one day, I, I was like, I was putting out content, I was just putting a link, and I realized on most platforms, just posting links on stuff is a horrible click through rate. So I said, what if I treated LinkedIn like Instagram, where because on my Instagram, I kind of story tell. So I said, what if I had a good picture, put up some good marketing copy in the beginning, and then put the link? And long story short, I mean, I've been using that formula ever since. It has really resonated well, and I've been able to connect with people like yourself, people from South Africa, people from the U.K., people from Russia, all across the country because it just made some strategic decisions to use LinkedIn, um, and it's been, it's been phenomenal. So, I mean, I'm on LinkedIn every day. I would consider myself a LinkedIn influencer. 
and I just use my platform not only to promote the stuff that I work on, but to also promote the stuff of other people that I support that I'm all I work with. So um, I just understand the language, and uh, I love LinkedIn. That's that's one of my biggest, biggest, biggest uh, technology resources. Well, LinkedIn, you need to teach me how to use LinkedIn <laughs> then because I'm terrible at it. Great. No, seriously, you do because I'm terrible at LinkedIn and I know I need to be better because Facebook is going the way of dinosaur. Facebook oh, is not good um, for the work we're doing, for the offering of books, for the podcast work. People barely see it on Facebook. They see it more on LinkedIn than mm-hmm. they do anywhere else. Yep, yep, yep. So, so uh, mm-hmm. Greg, if you had to be educated by anyone inside or outside your field, who would it be and why? I would say, I would say Will Smith. Um, Will Smith, there was a moment in around 2010 where I, I stumbled upon a Will Smith video on YouTube, uh, Will Smith Words of Wisdom, and that video changed my life forever. Um, it was just one of the deepest videos that I've ever watched. And, man, just to what he has done for the, 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 the music industry, what he has done for the movie industry, what he has done for humanity, and kind of what he's done for his family. I would just love to kind of pick his pick his brain. I hate using that word, but I'm gonna use that word. <laughs> pick his brain. I would just just absorb. I have so many questions, and more importantly, outside of questions, I would just like to watch him, man. Watch how he prepares for teams. Watch how he yeah. um, organizes and wins his team. So, I mean, I would say Will Smith because of his authenticity, his determination, and more so his spirit to dominate whatever field he's in. Yes. And um, he's a phenomenal actor at that, and um, he's a great personality to still hang out with. And, Greg, what is your favorite book? And it doesn't have to be a business business book, but it has to be a book that you go back to time and time again. Oh, man, that's a great question. I would say um, off the top, it would be The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Um, it's an oldie but goodie. The majority of your listeners probably have already listened or read it, but it never gets old. It, it, it just about mindset, about energy, and, man, that when I read that book, I read that book my fifth year in college. When I, was a fifth, I was a seven-year senior, but uh, my fifth year when I was uh, starting businesses and doing all these things, man, that book just changed my whole perspective on positivity change my whole perspective on the way you use words, and change my whole perspective on the people that you allow in your life. Well, The Power of Positive Thinking, I presume that book can be found on Audible, Amazon, yep. everywhere else it can be. It will change your life. Okay. Yep, it will change your life. It will change your life. Now I need to get The Power of Positive Thinking, Greg Hill, because I need help of positive thinking in my own life. But I wanted to ask you, where can people find you? And, of course, where can people find your book on Amazon, oh, man, well, I presume? Yeah, well, shoot. You can find me at GregoryHill.com. You can find me on Instagram at Gregory Hill, Twitter at Gregory Hill, Snapchat Gregory E. Hill, and all other platforms. You just Google Greg E. Hill, I'll pop up. The book is on Amazon. Uh, you can type in Greg E. Hill or Remember You're a Genius Again. Or you can find the book at GregoryHill.com backslash book. So that's where you can find me online and all these platforms. And, yes, you can find his podcast all over the place. I have it in my iTunes feed. It comes out every single Friday. I haven't listened to a episode lately. Maybe when I'm not running around this week, I will sit down and listen to another episode of your podcast, but give us the name of your podcast again. Oh, man, my name, the name of the podcast, thank you for reminding me, is the Minority Trailblazer Podcast. We usually record episodes every Thursday, so they either, they either come out Thursday morning or Friday morning, so you can check us out interviewing some of the world's latest and greatest 
trailblazers of color in industries such as tech, entrepreneurship, business, and everything else. And I presume that the podcast is on your website, and the yep. book will have all of Greg's information in the show notes. You guys, you um, know how to get to show notes. You just click on any podcast, and depending on the podcast post, puts it in the podcast. Come out, it works automatically, flips over, and goes to the show notes. Now, Greg, I know you've been dying to ask me a couple of questions, so you can ask me two to four questions, and then we'll see how you do. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, right off the bat, because I always just try to, I try to be as real and transparent as possible. But how 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 has hmm, how have you been able to grow, and how has uh, your and I don't want to call it an illness, I don't want to call it a disease, but uh, so because you have cerebral palsy, right? Yeah, yeah. So how yeah. how has that really um, affected you as far as in this podcast space, and how have you been able to um, still? Because I, I found it so so inspirational that you're still creating content, you're creating stuff. And I know there is this challenges, but what do you think, this is the question, what do you think is the biggest benefit of what some may say is a very, 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 very um, challenging uh, disease? Disability. And just to let you guys know, cerebral palsy doesn't stop me. Cerebral palsy is not genetic in any way. It's not hereditary. So when I choose to have kids or I'm actually going to adopt a kid, quite frankly, I cannot pass cerebral palsy on to that child, believe it or not. And so I could have a completely able-bodied kid. But the biggest motivation to me is in the podcasting community is interviewing box stores like you. And when I started this podcast, I didn't know what it was going to turn into. And as of yesterday, well, as of June 19th, we celebrated four years of starting this podcast. And then four as years, of wow. yesterday, we hit 50,000 downloads of wow. the podcast of all time. And I'm still trying to work on that 700, num- 700 download numbers when I release a new episode. So you guys have to help me with that for my birthday. And so it's going to be interesting because I didn't know how the podcasting community would accept me, but the podcasting community has been wonderful, and my podcast host, Listen, has been wonderful, and the podcasting community has really rallied around not only you, but me as well because we're Mm -hmm. facing diversity and people want to learn about diversity and challenges and how we overcome them. Yeah, nah, yep, 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 you're right. So, I mean, that first of all, that I appreciate you sharing that um, and all that. Uh, But what has been, what has been the most exciting part outside of podcasting, but what has been the most exciting moment for you this year? Because I, I love to talk about, I love to feel people's joy. So share me an exciting moment that you have had this year. Uh, I have decided that I'm going to be a iOS app developer and oh, work wow. on Android as well. So I just decided that yesterday, so that's a really typical moment because I'm also going back to school in the fall for journalism to get my associate's degree in journalism. And so that's been really exciting to finally make up my mind in my 30s um, to figure out what to do with my life and to step away from the education system, the traditional education system. So for, for 11 years, I taught early childhood education. I finally retired myself from um, teaching early childhood education in May. And so... Um, For me, once I decided to get my degree in fashion journalism, doors have really opened up. 
and with the app developing, I have I will see a huge future in that. I'm not trying to make money off of it, my God, but I will um, just be helping others with my story and my talent. Mm, I love that. I love that. I love that. I love that. You know, the last question that we have time. Um, the last question would be, if you had to share um, one nugget of wisdom that you have uh, obtained, I know one nugget is, is, is very few, but one nugget of, just, uh, of wisdom that you obtain um, dealing with um, your disability and, and just, just going through life, what would that one nugget be? And imagine, imagine, this one nugget is you have the mic, right, and you're standing on a platform in the whole world. Multiple billion of people are watching you in this moment. It's getting translated for the people that do Chinese and sign language and all that good stuff. So you had your one shot to say some words to the world. What would it, what would you say? My one shot is just keep at it and keep being consistent and keep being authentic with the work you do. My one word is consistency. Mm. I love that. I love that. I love that. So that's all I really got for right now. Yep. Well, I um, appreciate you guys making the time out of your day. And, yes, this podcast episode will um, be coming out tomorrow. I'll upload it as soon as I get home. And so you guys can hear it tomorrow. And I appreciate you spending a half an hour with me, Greg. And I hope my team enjoys listening to your podcast. Go back and listen to um, Lena Campbell's episode. Go back and listen to episode 22 where Glenn does a burden interview. I will continue to support Greg. And let's make this world a better place, you guys. And that is my last podcast in my 20s, believe it or not. And this <laughs> podcast has been sponsored by Kitta, K-I-T-T-E-R. They, or you, can compose the tweet, and they put the trending hashtag with it. So um, either way, you guys don't get lost in the heap on Twitter. So I appreciate Greg's time, and I hope he enjoyed it. And I definitely, definitely, definitely appreciate you guys. And let's make that 700 download numbers work when I publish your episode, you guys, and let's just make this world a better place and keep sharing our passions. Thanks, you guys. Oh, that was good. Hello?